Well, we saw one formulation of TCA, which was variance maximization, right? So we saw a formulation which was, which is called uh, find UI, find U1, okay, which maximizes, which maximizes projected variance, right? Projected variance. This was one formulation of PCA. There is an alternative formulation called distance minimized formulation, right? So in the, in the projected variance formulation, we saw that this is the op optimization problem we are solving with this objective function and with this constraint, right? So there is an alternative formulation, which I'll explain now, okay? So let's assume I have my points, right? Again, we always assume that our data is column standardized, okay? So imagine what I want to find here. Imagine if I have, if I have my points like this, right? If I have my points like this, Right? Just like the previous case. Now, in the previous case, what did we say? We said that we want to find a direction. Right? We want to find a direction. We want to find u, u1, which maximizes variance or spread. Right? This was this was the first formulation. There is an alternative formulation to it, which is I take the distance of each of these points to this line. Okay. Let's call this d1. Let's call this distance d2 so on and so forth. So for each point xi, I can get di, which is the distance from xi to u1, the direction u1. This is the direction, right? This is the distance, right? So now in the distance minimization, we can write the optimization problem as follows, that we want to minimize right we we want to find u1 which minimizes the sum of these distances squared right we will try to explain what di is in terms of u and xi in a second okay this is called distance minimization formulation of pca because what are we doing we are trying to find u1 such that if i take all the distances from each of my points right all these distance squares. So this distance squared, this distance squared, this distance squared, so on and so forth. If I sum up all of them, I want to minimize these distances, right? So let's understand these distances slightly in more detail. So let's assume these are my two axes, F1 and F2. Let's assume I have one point here. Let's just call that point Xi. One of the points, right? So, and let's assume this is my this is my direction of u right this is my direction u1 again in this case i am going to assume that u1 is a unit vector right in the direction of f1 dash that we are interested in okay what is a unit vector unit vector means u1 transpose u1 equals to 1 or the length of u1 is not is 1 that's what a unit vector definition is now, what we want to find is this distance. So if I project this perpendicularly, what I, what I want to find is this distance. Now, what is this distance? If this is perpendicular, let's, let's try to use simple trigonometry, right? What is this distance? Let's try to understand. So let's take this part. This is nothing but, this part is nothing but projection of xi on u1. That's this length, right? Now, what is this length? This length is nothing but the length of xi, right? Now, we know that projection of xi on, on u1 is nothing but u1 transpose xi, right? Now, what is d? So, from trigonometry, d square or di square, let's just call it di because it's a distance of point xi to this line, okay? where the unit, this unit line is u1. Now from trigonometry, I know that d1, di square is nothing but xi, the length of xi square minus this square, this length square, this length square. So let me just change the color here. So this length square minus this length square is this length, right? So let me just write it. 
So di square is nothing but xi length of xi square minus u1 transpose xi square because this is this is nothing but this length right because this length is nothing but projection of xi on u1 right and what is this this is nothing but xi transpose xi right this is nothing but xi transpose xi minus u1 transpose xi square now now let's write the formula let's write the complete formula so we want to find we want to minimize the distance squared the sum of distance squared right i equals to 1 to n right and what what is my variable here u1 u1 is something that i want to find right so let's let's write the whole thing it is xi transpose xi minus u1 transpose xi squared right this is my distance squared so this part here this part right here is my di squared right so and of course because you this is known xi's are known this xi is also known so because xi's are xi's are nothing but they're part of your data data matrix x right because the i row here is xi transpose right so you are given xi's and you have to find u1 now which minimizes this okay again there is one more constraint here such that u transpose u equals to 1 okay you might say this problem doesn't look exactly like the previous problem let's go and look at the previous problem right this problem is maximization of u1 transpose xi square so the constraint looks exactly the same this constraint and the other constraint that we just saw are same but here we have a maximization problem of this there we have a minimization problem right but if you remember this part this part is exactly what we have so what we had there let me just rewrite it in a different color here what we had there was maximize find u1 that maximizes 1 by n i equals to 1 to n u1 transpose xi square such that u transpose u equals to 1. This was what we got when we did variance maximization formulation. Variance maximization formulation of PCA. This is what we got, right, when we did distance minimization formulation of PCA. Now, uh, with some with some optimization, of course, this and this are exactly the same. But the next, the next, the big question here is: Are are these two the same? They don't look same because this is a minimization problem. This is a maximization problem. The only thing is, this looks very similar to this. We don't have this term here at all. But what happens is, uh, with with some with some uh, with some simple transformations in optimization, we can prove that the u1 that achieves this minimization is same as the u1 that maximizes this we can show that and i promise you i'll show you that when we learn optimization and we learn some basics of optimization a little later the reason i'm not teaching optimization right away is i don't want to divert from the flow of the topic right but i promise you we have a whole section just revisiting pca optimization when we learn constraint optimization okay so we will show that it, it, one of the things that we'll show is that the u1 that minimizes this with this constraint is the same u1 that maximizes this we will prove this i promise you okay but here i wanted to show you that there is an alternative formulation of pca the one we saw earlier was the variance maximization formulation there is also a distance minimization formulation that i wanted to introduce you to and how to solve both of these problems or either of these problems again just be a little patient i wanted you to see a few optimization problems so that you understand why we are learning calculus, why we are learning simple differentiation and partial, partial derivation, partial differentiation. Okay. I didn't want to teach you dry theory because then you'll never be able to connect the dots. So please bear with me. Let's just let's assume that we know how to solve this for now. The exact process of solving this problem, we'll see it when we learn optimization.